Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. dropping in on you. hope everybody's having uh, a great start to the week. I hope that you have gotten off to a good start. Whatever it is that you are setting out to do, I hope that you are truly uh, in a place of progress and you are measuring your steps. Um, as you see in the intro to this video, we are still in the midst of a fundraiser. If you believe in the work that we're doing on so many different fronts, we need your support. I cannot stress that enough, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. Uh, it should be evident. But I definitely want to challenge you to give, to support, to actually get engaged in being a resource to something that is a resource to our people. Uh, on that note, I'm going to move on. Look, enough with the gender uh, war. and. And, and, and I mean that from a place of concern. Uh, let me let me explain something to you. If you don't take anything away from the things that I share and I teach, understand the power of the media to create narratives, push those narratives to achieve certain agendas, and you have to be aware of how the narrative impacts you. Um, the whole gender war thing, the whole it's the black man's fault, I don't need a man, it's all the black woman's fault, and all of these things are actually narratives being pushed by non-black entities uh, for the sake of division, disruption, uh, disempowerment, and so much more. Let me explain something to you, and they use us to do it. Let me explain something to you. Uh, Sierra is currently uh, Sierra whoever she was before she met Russell Wilson Sierra Wilson Sierra is currently catching smoke on Twitter because of this new song I think for the girls or something like that it's probably going to be the 2023 anthem for black male hatred it's the black man's fault you don't need a man do it on your own now I'm, I'm, I'm in one way elated to see so many people get it and catch it and not foul, fall emotional, uh, uh, emotionally for the, the, the play of the hands. Now, Sierra is probably one of the most celebrated girl you won images out there in, 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 in the black celebrity sphere. Everybody's talking about how she landed Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is quote unquote the quintessential win for for a woman, right? And she got him. This same person with this unbelievably explodingly glaring wedding ring is singing a song about you don't need a man, you don't you got it, you to do this. Now you go she's gonna hang up those headphones and she's going home to Russ. Now don't get me don't get me wrong. I don't know what goes on in the house but based on the image they are presenting the song isn't representative of where her heart is the song says it's money in pushing distance dissatisfaction anger bitterness and frustration in the minds and the hearts of black women towards black men 
Now, don't get me wrong. It's a bunch of songs out there full of misogyny. We don't necessarily get themes. We just have a bunch of bull crap constantly pumped in our heads that devalue women. So, yeah, but, you know, the one thing I can say about the queen of the, th the, 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 the black female theme song, Mary J. Blige. Mary was going through some stuff. Mary was writing her life. Mary was really being cathartic in what she was going through. And so you kind of get it. Okay, we know when Mary's having an issue because Mary's coming out with a song. And these songs are relatable because they're real. And I'm not going to tell somebody how to deal with their pain. So I'm not going to say don't 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 come up with the thing. My, my thing is know when you're being capitalized on. Know when somebody's pushing you some BS. Know when... It's not good for you. And you got to understand why is number one is there's a demand for it. So you got to understand there's a money grab. It's a demand for it. So song going to sell, going to produce a lot of revenue, probably going to get her platinum, all of this stuff. Right. But what's the underlying thing? Why else is it going to be backed by major, a major record label? Because it's going to continue the narrative of dissension between black females and black men that for the next nine or ten months, black men are going to hear this song blared and concepts and ideas from this song are going to be thrust at them constantly and ongoing. This isn't some championing save the black men diatribe. I'm not here pretending that we as black men don't have issues we need to work on that are creating issues within the black community. This isn't what this is about. And anybody who follows me knows that I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not hard on anyone else as much as I am my brothers. Why? Because I'm a black man. So that's where I stand. That's where I have my greatest influence. So obviously I'm going to want the thing I represent the most to have the strongest and the best improvement and best position. I, I Plus, I believe we are never going to get anywhere if we can't get our men right. I don't care how set we get our women. If our men ain't right, we ain't going nowhere. If our men are right, we can create an environment for our women to get right. We can create an environment of healing, or an environment of safety. But if our men ain't right, you're never going to get it because there's no trust. See, I, a woman wants to trust somebody to protect her, even if she doesn't understand it, doesn't know it. And it may be a threat herself. She wants somebody to protect her. At the core. Now, there's a lot of healing that needs to go on. Don't get me wrong. But at the core, if there's nobody she can trust to do that in this, she's going to always have this trust. It's going to be real easy for her to attack men because she feels betrayed, even if she doesn't know how to explain it, even if she doesn't know how to articulate it and put it in a way that it makes sense to you. I can tell you that that's where she's at. Here's the problem, though. When you got a person who's pumping this to you like she's in your sisterhood say for instance you are going through it say if you've had a rough go of it in relationships and you've had a rough go of it and, and you did it now she did she went through some situations but she's not in that situation anymore she's found it, it, it would appear to me that her 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 artistic expression will be along the lines of the traveling of her life which would say man it's rough out there it's hard to find but i'm telling you stay true believe in love don't give up on love i found the best love I, i'm living the life that i always dreamed about it took a while to get here but look and you gotta understand she's not that old so it's not like it took her to her 50s before she found love we're talking about she went through this rough patch of dudes and some of it's on the dude, some of it's on her choosing what she was choosing. But nevertheless, these dudes didn't treat her the way she needed to be treated. And all of a sudden, somebody comes along and expresses interest and shows her certain things about herself that she hadn't seen. And she starts to feel good about herself. All of a sudden, her standard starts to go up. And this person says, hey, look, this is how I'm going to handle you. 
I'm not going to handle you the way they handled you. I'm going to handle you the way I feel you deserve to be handled. Not how, not even how you're presenting to me right now. I'm going to handle you in the way I see you. And, and that's the beauty of it. When a man really knows who he is, he can see past the facade of a woman. He can see past what she's presenting sometimes and realize there's something valuable underneath all of this mess and be willing to dig out, dig it out and pull it out and dress it up and, and, and t take it and value it because he sees it. You know, it's rare, but hey, it's something to be valued in men. And there are those of us out here who are willing to do that. So here it is again. She's going to be out there pumping it up. Everybody that's not in a great relationship at the time is going to jump on board because this is what we do. This is how we get gassed up constantly. And, you know, brothers every now and then get this stuff, you know, uh, you know, some what about eight, seven, eight years ago, you know, these hoes ain't lol and all this other stuff that's coming out. And the truth of the matter is we got a lot of people who need healing. We got a lot of people who weren't uh, properly nurtured in the home environment. And it showed up in their love life later on. And then it sort of festered and evolved into a cycle of poor decision making, poor selection, poor engagement a lower self-esteem, low self-confidence. And I'm not just talking about our women, I'm talking about our men too. And then we look at it and say, man, this shit doesn't work. To hell with love. Ain't nothing, you know, so then it started to be about the bag. So they start pumping the bag big time. Then they start pushing that high value bullshit. And then they start pushing all this other stuff. So we start qualifying ourselves with everything except pureness of spirit. We start qualifying ourselves with everything except loyalty and commitment to finish what we start. So it became whatever I can get, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to go. Why? Because this stuff don't work. I'm going to get what I can and I'm going to move on. That's how life has always treated me, so this is how I'm going to behave. I'm, devalu I'm, I'm devaluing myself, believing that I'm uh, actually increasing my value in the world. But I don't realize it because the narrative is so strong and the intent is so felt that I don't even realize what I'm doing. What's happening without us even realizing it. What I, and I've gotten this far in the conversation, haven't mentioned it. That's how powerful it is. The, the destruction and the disintegration of the black family nucleus. Destroy the idea of love and people stop talking about being together, building families. People stop talking about marriage. People start talking about, hey, look, I'm gonna get the bag. I'm gonna get the dude with the bag. You know, what can he do? Can he pay all the bills? Meanwhile, the black family nucleus is suffering and we're getting an onslaught of gender confusion and gender agendas and we are not prepared to deal with it why because we are buying into an idea that the very ones we need are the ones we don't and it just really trips me out but i'm glad that she got called out on it uh i'm pretty sure the song is gonna go anyway because it's it's gonna be one of them things that everybody's gonna jump on because just as many people who are calling her out for it it's going to be just as many or more who are going to jump on it because of their feelings and sing it to the top of their lungs. But I'm so glad that people point out, yeah, as soon as you get off that mic with that big ass ring on your finger, you going home to Russell while you just gassed us up not to need a man, not to want a man, not to be with a man. <clears throat> and so that's the thing that we have to be aware of is how are we being played by the media? How are we being played? You know, black men, anything that suggests that you disrespect or devalue or denigrate our women isn't for us. It doesn't bring us power. It doesn't add anything to us. It only causes us to, to, to uh, contribute to the destruction of self-image, self-esteem, self-awareness, and the overall collective psyche of our women, that cannot be acceptable. I don't care what they are doing, you have a responsibility to lift them, to elevate them. You'd be surprised at what you can do when you talk to a person as you see them in, in, in their best self versus how you see them behaving. I do it all the time. You're amazed at what you can do when you talk a person up instead of uh, highlighting where they're failing. 
It's easy to point it out because the first thing that happens when you highlight somebody's failure, you feel good about it because you never highlight something that you're failing at. You only highlight something where you feel like you're doing pretty good in that area. So you go highlight that and you feel good about yourself. But all you did was reinforce some idea within themselves about themselves that's got them behaving that way because that's what's guiding their behavior is a subconscious notions about themselves. You have the ability to sit up and I do this consistently. I, I, I do it with the little girls I work with in the community. I do it with the young ladies that I deal with and the young women that I deal with as clients. I'm going to talk you up. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you your behavior is acceptable. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you you're making great decisions. But what I'm going to tell you is that you're smart. I'm going to say you're smarter than that. I'm not going to call you stupid. I'm going to tell you you're smarter than that. I'm not going to call you any derogatory name. I'm going to say you're better than that. Let me show you why you're better than that. And then I'm going to go find the things that are in there amongst all that junk that people have just been constantly piling on and, and, and show you that underneath all of these false labels is the true you and there's something special about you. And that's with everybody. But if we keep attacking, they keep lighting the fuse and setting it off and there we go. And you don't think that when you play that anthem, guys aren't going to get in a certain way and fire back. They may not fire back with a song, but they're going to fire back at how they handle you, how they look at you, how they treat you, how they approach you. When guys get the idea that you've commodified them and the only thing you want is the bag, don't you realize they'll get the bag and use the bag to manipulate you? Because you're in their mind, you're trying to play them. Nobody's seeking the heart, any, the heart anymore. Nobody's seeking the purity of connectivity and bonding and sinking of energy to create a synergistic force that moves you and your family and this race in a, in, in a new and powerful direction. Everybody's sitting up individualizing their feelings and taking every opportunity to attack the other side. If I'm going to say this and I'm done. If by any chance you look and you say, there's this one couple. I love how they get along. I love how they love on each other. I love this. I love that. Uh, I love how he treats her. Ladies, if there's a man and you've looked at him and you say, man, I love the way he handles his wife. I love the way he handles his woman. Uh, I love the way he talks to her. I love the way he speaks to her. I love the way he's faithful to her. Um, trust me, he's not a unicorn. If you can see him treating her that way, there's other guys out there. And I can tell you that some of them are single. And some of them want nothing more than to love a woman, but they want a woman they can love that will sink into them. They don't want to marry a war. They don't want to marry somebody. They got to come home and fight harder than they had to fight out there in the world that's hostile towards them. They want to come home to peace. And if they can come home to peace, they'll bring you a security you never felt before. They'll bring you a sense of love you never felt before. The problem is everybody has been so conditioned and, 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 and tweaked to see what's wrong that we're missing all the things that are right. Whatever you focus on, you feel. Whatever you give your attention to has power. We're focusing on the wrong thing and we're constantly being misled by the media, which is being controlled by those who definitely don't have our best interests at heart. So here's my challenge. We've got to do better. We've got to start looking first inside of ourselves. Am I the best person? Am I presenting or can I sense bitterness in me? Is there a level of malevolence about how I'm handling anybody in the enclave, especially our women, if you're a man, especially our men, if you're a woman? But how, even if you're a woman, how are you handling other sisters? Because that's what I find interesting. There's this common cry. We don't need a man, but there's a lot of infighting and cattiness and outright jealousy and envy with, with it, within the sisterhood. Black man, we need to stop being so damn competitive with one another.
We're missing opportunities to come together and build and grow together. And this is not an accident. This is the stuff that's being pushed on us as as themes and 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 and, and uh, anthems and 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 and, and uh, whatever. Stop letting things that diminish us be pushed on us for us to regurgitate. That's my challenge on that. I'm done with it. Um, I hope that I made a valid point here. I'm going to get off. Like I said, if you believe in the work we're doing, whether it's the research center, whether it's the think tank, whether it's pro, uh, whether it's program development, program implementation, uh, black men lead uh, the programs we have with young black women suffering from trauma, incest, intimate partner violence to mental health. All of this stuff. Look, we've been doing this for over 20 something years. This isn't new for us, but we definitely need your support. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. You guys, thank you for letting me take a bit of your time. I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.